Welcome to this Eucharistic celebration, celebrated by His Eminence, Oswald Cardinal Gracious, and concelebrated by Most Reverend Leopoldo Jelly, the Papal Nuncio. We invite you to rehearse a few hymns so that we can participate in this Eucharist in a worthy manner.
His truth may be trusted by all who surrender their will. To ward on the chaos of darkness, give hope in the midst of despair. To make of our lives new creations and light in the burdens we bear. Lord, run to our eyes and our watchful. Years ever open to hear the word that in love you are speaking, the word that dispels all our fear. Your death, resurrection has claimed us, but part in the flesh that is we. You know that our spirits are willing, give strength with the word that you speak. A lamp that's not steps has been given, a light has been set on a hill. God's word in his truth may be trusted. By all who surrender their will To order the chaos of darkness Give hope in the midst of despair To make of our lives new creation And lighten the burdens we bear Lord, grant to us eyes ever watchful and ears ever open to hear the word that in love you are speaking, the word that dispels all our fear. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. A very hearty welcome to each one of you, my dear Excellency Archbishop Leopoldo Gigirelli, Monsignor Thomas, and uh, my dear Archbishops, Bishops, and my dear fathers and friends, we've come here for a very special ecclesial event when the Apostolic Nuncio appointed to India presents his credentials, as it were, to the Church of India, telling the Church of India, come over here as your pastor, not just as an ambassador, as a pastor. Uh, let's uh, sit for a moment and hear the official letter appointment. Your Eminence, Your Graces, uh, Your Lordships, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I am delighted to be here this evening in the Cathedral of the Holy Name to celebrate the Holy Eucharist with you. I offer it in thanksgiving at the end of what has been an important day in my mission in India. This morning in Delhi, I presented my letters of credence to the President of the Republic, a solemn step which allows me publicly to be begin my mission as representative of the Holy Father in this beloved land. Tonight, here in Mumbai, I come to present a letter to His Eminence, Cardinal Grisias, President of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of India, to accredit me as the Holy Father's representative to the Church in India. 
There are many parts to the role of the people representative. However, in the words of Pope St. Paul VI, the primary and specific aim of the mission of the pontifical representative is to make the bonds that link the apostolic see and the local church ever closer and more effective. It is the, therefore fitting that my first public act following the formal beginning of my public mission as apostolic nuncio is to be with you this evening to present this letter from, him, from His Eminence, Eminence, the Secretary of State, Cardinal Pietro Paralin, to Your Eminence as President of the Bishops' Conference. As I do so, I express my willingness to walk with the bishops of India with a spirit of fraternal collaboration. In so doing, I rely on the prayers of all here present so that I might become, in the words of Pope Francis, a link, or better, a bridge of connection between the Vicar of Christ and the, Pope and the people to whom I am sent, the beloved people of India. So now I have the honor and the privilege to present the letter of Cardinal Parolin to you, dear Eminence Cardinal Grisius. It was my intention to read the letter which Cardinal Parolin has written, but it is in Latin. Oh, there is a translation. Uh, most Reverend Eminence, you have doubtless already come to know about the mission of the Apostolic Nuncio in the Republic of India, recently entrusted by the Supreme Pope Pontiff Francis to our venerable brother Leopoldo Girelli, titular Archbishop of Capri, who will hand over this letter to your eminence with all due respect. Even if the outstanding qualities of this legate of the Apostolic See allow him to hope properly to fulfill the responsibility entrusted to him, I would still request you, most reverend eminence and other prelates of the Episcopal Conference over which you preside, kindly to lend him your support and to sustain him in his mission. In your kindness, therefore, please proceed with the same appreciation in regard of which we even now render much gratitude to you in the name of the Roman Pontiff. Finally, I gladly take this opportunity to wish your most reverend eminence and through you, the other prelates of India, most respectful greetings and remembrance with fraternal charity in the Lord. Signed, His Eminence Pietro Cardinal Parolin, Secretary of State. Thank you to Cardinal Parolin and a warm, warm welcome to Archbishop Leopoldo Girelli. We are joyful and privileged to have you. Uh, I'm going to make sure this is kept very uh, safely and handing it over now to the Secretary. We'll now proceed with the Mass because we begin, he be, uh, Archbishop Girelli begins this, his mission with this Mass, praying for the Church in India that God's Kingdom become more and more present in our beloved Motherland. Let's begin this Eucharistic sacrifice putting ourselves in God's presence and asking His forgiveness for our sins. As we say, 
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, may he forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. God, who are prepared for those who love you, good things which no eye can see. Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Can you sit for the readings? A reading from the book of Judges. At that time, all the leaders of Shechem came together, and all Beth Milo, and they went and made Abimelech king by the oak of the pillar of Shechem. When it was told to Jotham, he went and stood on top of Mount Gerizim and cried aloud and said to them, Listen to me, you leaders of Shechem, that God may listen to you. The trees once went out to anoint a king over them, and they said to the olive tree, Reign over us. But the olive tree said to them, Shall I leave my abundance by which gods and men are honored and go to hold sway over the trees? And the trees said to the fig tree, You come and reign over us. But the fig tree said to them, Shall I leave my sweetness and my good fruit and go to hold sway over the trees? And the trees said to the vine, You come and reign over us. But the vine said to them, Shall I leave my wine that cheers God and men and go to sway over the trees? Then all the trees said to the bramble, You come and reign over us. And the bramble said to the trees, If in good faith you are anointing me king over you, then come and take refuge in my shade. But if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm. In your strength, O Lord, the king rejoices. In your strength, strength O Lord, Lord, the king, king rejoices. In your strength, O Lord, the king rejoices. How greatly your salvation makes him glad. You have granted him his heart's desire. 
you have not withheld the prayer of his lips our response in, in your, your strength, strength o lord, lord the, the king, king rejoices you came to meet him with blessings of prosperity you have set on his head a crown of pure gold he asked you for life and this you have given days that will last from age to age our response in your, in your strength, strength o lord, lord the, the king, king rejoices. rejoices by your saving help great is his glory you have bestowed upon him majesty and splendor you have granted him blessings forever made him rejoice with the joy of your presence our response in, in your, your strength, strength o lord, lord the king rejoices kindly rise to welcome christ in the gospel The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus told his disciples this parable. For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, the master sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, the master saw other, others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them, he said, you go into the vineyard and, wh and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, the master did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing and he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. The master said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, 
each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first who came first they thought they would receive more but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it they grumbled at the master of the house saying these last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have done who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat but he replied to one of them friend I am doing you no wrong did you not agree with me for a denarius take what belongs to you and go I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you and I have not allowed to am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me or do you be do you begrudge my generosity? So, the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear Archbishop Girelli, Winston Robert, my dear brother bishops, archbishops, bishops, fathers, and friends. This Mass is a Mass of intercession, Mass of thanksgiving to God, a mass, mass praying to God that He blesses our country. The readings we've just heard, the Gospel and the first reading, uh, uh, have got uh, so many lessons to each one of us. In the Old Testament, we have from the book of Judges, the first reading. And I think uh, scripture scholars would tell us that this is one of the few places in the whole Old Testament where we have a fable told. Fable, and uh, the fable is of, we've heard in our Indian history, Indian uh, mythology of animals. Uh, choosing a king. But here we have in the Old Testament, in this book over here, in this chapter, the plants are choosing the, uh, a king. And uh, the background to this section is that the sons of Gideon, Gideon of the Old Testament, who led his people so very wisely, uh, refused to be king because there's only one king, God, Yahweh. And then he's so many. But when he's, uh, he died, his sons, uh, he had many sons. Uh, one of the sons, Abimelech, decided uh, that he should be king and got the, all the other brothers assassinated, killed. And one, one escaped. And that's the one, Jotham, who gives us this fable of speaking of, he says, the plants decided to choose a king. And he was, of course, was sarcastic, showing that what his brother did was wrong. He says they are, went to the olive. Uh, and asked the olive to be king. The olive says, no, I want to really continue making oil and anointing people. Uh, went to the fig and said, you become king. No, I want to continue giving my sweetness and uh, fruit to the people. Uh, finally went to the wine uh, and asked the wine, you be king. And the wine said, no, no, I want to continue making, giving grapes and making wine for people. And finally, the one who agreed to be king was the bramble bush, who had neither gave shade nor gave fruit. And he was, he was ridiculing his brother, and showing that really uh, was absurd of him to want to become king. But for us, I suppose, each one of us, it's a lesson in the, as we, across the centuries, that we, each one of us, is called to do our task, but to use our God-given talents for the spread of his kingdom, for uh, the growth of 
knowledge of Christ, the life of the gospel, uh, which we've heard in the beautiful parable in, of the gospel passage. This gospel passage also has got uh, so many, so much implications, and we could look at it as a uh, social worker and say, you must be a just wage, a family wage. Uh, you can look at it, uh, uh, speaking of uh, as an ecclesiologist, ecumenical, those who come last also into the church have got as much right in the church as before. But if you look as, as us simple people, uh, Jesus tells us, why are you jealous that I'm giving uh, the last one as well as the first? I think when we read this, all of us, I want to confess myself also, uh, we feel a little sympathy for the first uh, the workers who work the whole day long. But when we reflect, you realize if the owner had given the last ones half a denario, so one quarter, there would be no grumbling at all. There'd be, people would be satisfied that he was fair. And so when you look at it, what Jesus has said uh, really is an insight. It's not really that you're felt you're unjust, but a little of a jealousy that somebody else has got what perhaps we feel uh, we should have got more. And in our holiness, the idea is to look at ourselves and see what the Lord wants of us and what the Lord wants us to do. Uh, Archbishop Girelli comes here to lead, as, as he said, to lead us and to lead the church in India, to guide us, the church in India also, to make it more really what God wants it to be, to be really the kingdom of God, to be more uh, Christ-centered, gospel-centered, and where justice, peace, unity uh, prevail. We know that he has come with the mandate of the Holy Father, represents the Holy Father, and towards the government. But more than the government, really, I think Pope Francis has been insisting his role is towards the church. And so today we pray. We pray that he helps us, bishops, but all religious and laity also, fulfill their role, guides us, uh, conveys to the Holy Father our loyal affection, but brings to us also messages from the Holy Father who always tells us to go out to the periphery. Uh, we, uh, during this Mass, we pray for a success of his mission. He begins the mission with the Lord, the success of his mission. We pray for the good health and uh, good collaboration of all his collaborators who are working with him. And we pray that he uh, helps us to really grow in holiness, grow in doing what the Lord wants of us, using our talents like in the first reading and the second reading as God wants us so that we can really promote God's kingdom. God bless each one of you. Let us now present to our Heavenly Father our prayers and our petitions. God has called each of us to be his collaborators in the vineyard, that the kingdom of God might increase and multiply. As we seek to fulfill his call and purpose, let us present to him all our needs and our difficulties. Our response, Lord, hear our prayer together. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Father, Pope Francis, His Eminence, Oswald Cardinal Gracious, and all the bishops of India, that they may exercise their sacred ministries, pastoral and administrative duties with dedication and competence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For His Excellency, most Reverend Leopoldo Girelli, that as he commences his mission as the new Apostolic Nuncio to India and Nepal, that he may be guided by the Holy Spirit to fulfill his duties with wisdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For all those who are going through sickness, suffering, financial instability, unemployment, injustice, and loneliness, that they may be firmly planted in God, 
who searches out the lost and helps them bear fruit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray that all those involved with the task of research and treatment related to COVID-19 may be effective in providing relief to the suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pause to remember our own personal intentions as well as those who have asked us to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear. hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you never withhold your blessings from those who love and serve you. May we always rejoice in your providence and strength. We make this prayer Amen. through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself. By the blood of his cross, he brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him, he has become the source of eternal salvation. So with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and flowers of powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. Without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. He broke the bread giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the bread to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith when we Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance uh, with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Oswald, our Bishop, all the bishops here, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at this at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, with faith, love, confidence, let us pray to our Heavenly Father that His kingdom may come in our lives, in our archdiocese, in our country, and in the world. Let's say the prayer Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, bread and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, who trespass against, against us. us. And, and lead us, us not, not into temptation, into temptation but, but deliver us, us from, evil. from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait for the blessed hope and coming of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, said your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer the sign of peace. May Christ peace be. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm not Lord worthy that you should enter into my roof. Don't only, only say the word, the word and my and soul, soul shall, shall be healed. O oh Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O oh Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O divine guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Make me like you, please make me like you. 
to follow your Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns, God forever and ever. Amen. I want to thank you for having come over here. And uh, Father Neil might give some instructions. We'll have a the blessing and I invite His Excellency, uh, to, His Holy Father's representative, to join me in the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. May he nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere always in holy deeds. Amen. May he turn your steps towards himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. This announcement is for all our concelebrants and the guests, few of us present here. Soon after Mass, I request you, since it's raining outside, to take the side entrance and to move into the Cathedral House residence, cross over to the Archbishop's house. There are priests to guide you there. We maintain our safety protocols. Seats are uh, marked for you. Can you listen to the priest where they will ask you to present yourselves? Thank you. And nice. have a nice evening. See you later. And you can have the concluding. God bless. This is the kingdom of God. Bless us, O Lord, make us poor in spirit. Bless us, O Lord, our God. We are the light of the world. May our light shine before all. That they may see the good that we do and give glory to God. Blessed are they who are meek and humble, they will inherit the earth. Bless us, O Lord, make 
us meek and humble. Bless us, O Lord our God. We are the light of the world. May our lives shine before all, that they may see the good that we do and give glory to God.